<laughs> what? Do y'all not have ducks in China? Do you eat ducks? <laughs> This is like a wholesome thriller. This is a trashy thriller, and I enjoyed them equally. Maybe the trashy one a little more. Oh my god. Go! I apologize. I will never do that in your house ever again, not under your roof. Your roof? Your rules, Mango. Understood. You're s I'm sorry. Go! Places to go, things to see, things to buy, things to do. I'm so freaking excited because this is my first time going out for leisurely purposes since Trader Joe's and Target are not considered leisurely purposes because I bought eggs. So this is probably the first time um, in months that yeah. we're going out for just for leisure, for fun's sake, for shits and giggles. I want to show you guys my best haul because this is like something that you guys have been requesting and I never really knew like where to kind of sneak it in. Like I couldn't like be like, hey, like, hey, we're about to dress up in Chinese traditional costumes, but like, look at my vest. Could, yeah. I could have done that. And so I'm, I've been trying so hard to just find, segue every single video into a vest video, and no matter how hard I've been trying, it just like hasn't been working. So today I was like, you know what? I don't even care. It's just gonna be a vest video. This is the vest video. So if you guys like the vest video, get out of the vest video. Subscribe. Oh. Best haul before we leave because um, we're gonna go to Barnes and Nobles, we're gonna go to Urban Outfitters, maybe I'll collect a few new vests on the way. But before I get that started, I just want to mention something. Some of you guys might not have a vest collection like me, which means that you guys don't have a natural form of birth control because whenever I put on a vest, my fiance thinks I look weird, he doesn't want anything to do with me, he thinks I look funny. And so the vest has been a form of birth control for us, but did you know vests are not medically approved birth control? <laughs> Where am I going with this? Today's video is sponsored by, you guessed it, bitch, Simple Health. If you guys don't know what Simple Health is, I'm going to leave a link in the description because listen. Listen, 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 listen. We are going out for the first time in months for leisurely purposes. Imagine how little I want to go out to go drive my little booty to the doctor's office, drive it back, and then drive it to the pharmacy to pick up some birth control. That is like literally the last thing that I want to do. So Simple Health is an online, convenient, affordable, and confidential birth control service. All you have to do is click the link in my description to get a free consultation with a licensed OBGYN and physician, and you fill out this health program. Profile. Super easy. Then they take a look at it and they're like, you know what? Because A, B, C, and D, we're gonna prescribe her this method of birth control because Simple Health carries over a hundred different brands of the pill, the patch, and the ring. The best part is you're still doing this in the comfort of your own house and then after they prescribe it to you, they will ship it to you with free shipping every single month. You never have to go to the pharmacy. You never have to be like, oh my gosh, next week I'm so busy but I'm almost out of birth control. You never have to be like, next week I'm going on a trip but I'm gonna run out of birth control on my trip. Like you never have to deal with stuff like that ever again. And if you guys are like, wait, I already have the birth control that I'm on and I love it. You can actually literally just transfer it over to Simple Health and stay on the same brand of birth control that you know and love through Simple Health. It's the best thing ever. Also, it's very, very affordable. It's not a luxury service. If you guys have health insurance, Simple Health accepts most health insurances, making this process completely free to most of you. And if you don't have health insurance, don't worry, a lot of us don't. It starts at $15 a month. And it's also confidential. If you guys live with your parents, you live with roommates, you live in a dorm, it doesn't say, oh my gosh, your birth control has been delivered on the package. So make sure to check out Simple Health. And thank you for sponsoring today's vest video. So my vest haul is going to be a vest slash clothing haul. I have been accumulating these for the past couple of months. I have been waiting for these. I ordered most of them from China, from AliExpress, because I'm going to tell you my whole vest story, okay? So this was not like a one-time purchase. This was like multiple different purchases. A lot of these are affordable, and I have been really dying to wear them, and I couldn't wear them because I couldn't sneak it in to a video casually. So the vest journey all started with one vest. <laughs> this is the Instagram this. This right here, I saw this all over Instagram. It's by a brand called the Kina and Tam. And this is honestly the priciest vest that I've ever purchased in my entire freaking life. Did I think vests were this pricey? Unless it's a bulletproof vest. Unless it's a snowproof ski vest. A life-saving water vest. Life jacket. That's what they're called. I wasn't going to spend 
spend that much money on it, but because my favorite Instagrammers were like, you should, I did. And I will tell you, it's like overwhelming, but underwhelming at the same time. Like when I put it on, I'm like, cute. But then also at the same time, I'm like, gotta keep wearing it so I get the usage out of the price of this. I don't know, something about it, it like it hits the spot but it doesn't. I got this on AliExpress for like $8, came super wrinkled, I have been hanging it up so that the wrinkles come off. It says Mason Prince on there. I feel like again this could be some sort of legal trademark issue that I might have to deal with later on in the future. Um, Don't sue me, sue them. Yeah, I got this for $8. I also got this Rice Krispie shirt, again. I highly doubt they paid for the licensing. It was five dollars on AliExpress. <laughs> this is this could be a lot of trademark sh shenanigans that I don't want to be involved in. Please don't involve me. It's just a haul. <laughs> this next one is also from China, and <laughs> what does that say? Yo Yu Jia, family with fish. <laughs> Shut up. So this is the family with fish, <laughs> but it's sunflowers. And this one really reminded me of Animal Crossing, and I think most of the vests that I got on AliExpress with the exception of a couple were around eight to ten dollars. So this one was probably around eight dollars. It's cool because it's got buttons. So it could be a vest or it could be a vest cardigan of a stardigan. Do you like these vests? <laughs> this one is questionable. Just doesn't feel good. do not feel like high quality, you know? Mm. This one I like. I've already worn it. Okay. This one's super cute. And it's super comfortable and it's not itchy. That's the one thing. If something itches, I'm not gonna wear it. You will never catch Stephanie Sue in an itchy shirt. So the next one is also another Kina and Tam vest. And this one is purple flowers. This is my least favorite of the three. It's cute. I like the purple color. Something about the fit is a little weird on this one. Like it's not like an oversized vest, but it's also not like the other one where it's kind of cropped. This one's just kind of like, like, did you not find the right size for you? I don't know, it's just a weird fit. This, however, I love this vest. I love this vest. <laughs> this one, I haven't worn yet. I wore this. Because it's thickums. It's thickums. Even if you don't wear anything underneath, you will sweat. It's probably one of the thickest vest material I've ever touched in my entire life. It's this little cartoon who is- Reindeer. Reindeer. Who's skiing. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. This is maybe my favorite one. Um, the only reason I would probably recommend the first Kina and Tam more is because that one is all year round. That one feels very seasonal. This one is also from AliExpress. Honey! <laughs> 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 Show some respect. How do Americans do duck noise? <laughs> we do. Ga. <laughs> do y'all not have ducks in China? What you ducks? <laughs> What's Roll the difference stick. between Peking duck and Beijing duck? It's the same thing. The fuck? Alright, so I got this goose sweater for like $9. Not my favorite of the vest because what? it's slightly itchy. That's it. Everything else I like. I like the high neck. I like that it's like this clean, but just like a fucking goose. And I like that it's looking at my right boob. Because mm. there's a lot to look at. I like this one. This one's a solid 10 out of 10. Would purchase again. This one. What is that? Explain yourself. Does that knock off Kina and Tam? I got really triggered because I saw my exact my exact vest from Keenan and Tan on AliExpress, okay? Like immediately after buying them. Then I was like, no, like the quality is gonna be shit. Like this is a knockoff. But then I was also thinking like Keenan and Tam are not like Louis Vuitton. I don't feel like AliExpress like knows Keenan and Tam. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, I don't freaking know. So for shits and giggles, I bought this because I saw this on the Keenan and Tam website and I think they were like sold out or something and I really wanted this design of like the Dalmatian. It's just super cute, like super weird. Like look at the back, it's like what striped it and weird. What does it say? It says Demo Shoe. Bits. And I was doing the most, you know, so yeah. I, I got this. It's actually really good quality And then it got me really concerned. Oh. This was eight dollars? Fifteen, I think. <laughs> like feel the quality. It's really good. It feels exactly the same. I'm telling you lots of trademark shenanigans happening in this video. <laughs> this one's cute though. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's so you. Yeah, I really like this one. Um, even though it's like kind of a knockoff, I like it a lot. <laughs> Nobody looks cute taking off a vest, okay? Hold on, I've got more vests, but let me go with my shirts. I was buying shirts off of Misguided for like, when it was on sale for 60% off, when it's normally 50% off, but then sometimes they would have 60% off sales. They'd be like, uh, $15 shirts, and they would just say, like, gibberish on them, like nothing on them. And so I decided to buy shirts from AliExpress because they were like $5. 
I was like, five dollars. So I bought a lot of um, AliExpress shirts and I have much regrets. So this is the first one I bought. I didn't really look into it. I just was like, this is a cute color. And then it got here and it says Woody's local safe sex bar. And um, he's wearing a condom. <laughs> Like, if you look really close, he's wearing a condom. I think that's a penis. He's a penis! <laughs> and it says Destin, Florida. And y'all know what goes down in Florida. Like, if you have kids or if you work with kids, just read the shirts before you buy them. The next one I got is called Fridat. I don't know if they were trying to say Friday, but they said Fridat. <laughs> it says Amazing Girl, He Likes Rugby and Fruit. What? And it says Live Face. It says 2020, so that kind of sums up 2020. I liked the color of this. I liked the free dot. And then I got these for like $4 each. What? A yellow cami, a purple cami. What? Yeah, with flowers. Those look expensive. They too. look expensive. And then this one is actually not from AliExpress. This is from another company that I'm obsessed with right now called Storettes. I thought it was like a UK brand because everyone was like, ooh, look at this like non-US made brand. They're so pretty. And like it looked so like different. It's from Korea. It's a Korean brand. I, I mean, I don't know if it's a Korean brand, but all of their stuff gets shipped from Korea. And so this is the first one, the daisy top that I wore on an Instagram picture that you guys liked. I thought this was really cute. And it feels really well made. This one is from AliExpress, another $5 shirt, along with my Rice Krispie $5 shirt. This one says 1997. My fiance made fun of me because he said, you're trying to trick people into thinking that you're younger than you are. And then I said, joke's on you. I'm going to wear this. And everyone's going to be like, I don't know, Stephanie was so old. Jokes on you, it was born in 95. November 27th though, so almost 96. Practically 97. I'm a 2000s baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and on the back it says Street Rod Nationals, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I've never been to Oklahoma, but the shirt's cute, <laughs> so. I got it. This one is a bomber jacket I got from Oxford. This is not even you. Like, I've never seen you wear a bomber jacket in my life. Are you kidding? Like, Are you serious? It's so me. Pay up, bits. You owe me money. I don't think anyone talks like that in a bomber jacket. I just feel like it looks so much cooler. I don't know. What does it say on it? It says, man's field, dark, mild, Wrexham bitter, the one and only. <laughs> I gotta start reading shit before I buy it. You really should. So that's the one I got. And then I got this purple one. Purple daisy top. Eight dollars. Super cute. Got some daisies on there. Little itchy. Tiny bit. This one is also from Storettes. It's an oversized gray vest. This looks like a pregnancy vest. <coughs> oh, I did say it was a pregnancy vest, didn't I? You yes. wore this with the white dress? Yes. And I don't know why you think that. I think it's such a cute vest. Okay, picture this. Close your eyes. Picture this. You already wore it. <coughs> Oversized white button up with this. Make sure your coochie isn't showing. And then just like knee high boots. Tiny little back. Hair claw clip. You're ready to go. Am I ever gonna wear that? No, because I don't go outside. Majority of these purchases I bought with the intention of when Corona's done, I'm gonna wear this. I took an Instagram picture of this. A lot of people asked me where it was from. This is also $8 from AliExpress. Takes a while to ship, but it's really cute. This one is also from Storettes. I've worn this multiple times before. I thought I was buying the vest, but the, the sleeves came with it. And I was like, what? Because the gray vest, they style it, but you mm -hmm. only get the vest. Yeah. But then this one, they were like, here are some sleeves. You look chilly. So I was like, that's really nice. I didn't even know that I paid for the sleeves. And then this one reminds me of Kina and Tam, but it was on AliExpress and it has white rabbit on there, I think. And maybe that's not even white rabbit. It's not white rabbit, honey. Trademark, trademark. Okay. And then I got a strawberry sweater for like $5. Five dollars? Yeah, this one feels itchy. It's almost like they lost money making yeah. this and shipping it to you. This one feels a little itchy. I will say maybe not worth the price. Ten seconds later. Did I just say it's not worth the five dollar price? <laughs> so this one I'm really disappointed by because I got this because it looked super cute. What the heck is inside? Another free shirt? Another free shirt. This feels like the material of a yoga mat. It's a weird material. Feel the material. I don't even... I feel like there was like a manufacturer of clothing on one side and then the ones that were making yoga mats and they were like, hey, we ran out of fabric. Can I just... And then they made yoga mat shirts. This one I love. He hates. 
It's a vest shirt, but it looks like there's suspenders. I love it. It's Halloween. Look at this neon yellow. Look at this navy. It is Halloween, bitch. This is going to be another trademark issue because I got a Mickey Mouse cardigan. Um. Does it actually say Mickey Mouse? A different type of mouse. No, it says Mickey Mouse. Oh, sometimes they do like Mickey Mouse, you know? They do a uh, Mickey Moose. I, I just love this. <laughs> You don't like it? It's okay. Yeah, it's actually not bad. I thought it could be really cute for the winter times. The winter times in LA where it gets down to a chilly 60 degrees. I could be like, oh my god, can't believe it's January. It's really amazing quality. It's so heavy. Feel this. Five dollars? No, that one was like 20. And then I got a goat cardigan because I want to think that I'm the goat. I think it's a sheep, honey. It's a goat. Is it a sheep? It's a sheep, honey. I think my mom will like it. So this one was really cute, very warm, also like $20. This one is my favorite, but it's also my mom's favorite because she's been wearing it. <laughs> my mom is getting into vests because of me. And this one is called Motor Prince. So we had Mason Prince, and now we have Motor Prince. <laughs> I like this more than the blue one. For some reason, the blue one doesn't hit, but this one hits. This one actually looks expensive. Like this looks like it's from Starettes, but it was like $5 on AliExpress. Speaking of $5, this looks $5. <laughs> this is the longest vest haul you've ever seen. You're probably so over it. Oh, let's go buy some books. <laughs> First of all, I'm kind of shook that we're outside for fun. This time we came to like a busy street where there's restaurants. There be some books. There's an Urban Outfitters. And we literally saw the lineup of palm trees and all of these stores. And we almost started crying. Like we genuinely <laughs> got so emotional listening to Mac Miller in the car. And we were like, God damn, what a sh world for a beautiful city right now <laughs> but the palm trees they be going strong look at the look at the palm trees they really do go strong you know so skinny yet so strong what are you we're out right now we're going to Barnes and Nobles this is called bookstar so it's kind of like a retro I think it used to be a movie theater and then they changed it into a bookstar and then Barnes and Nobles bought it out but, but on the in freaking title it says bookstar yeah but it's inside of an old movie theater and you'll see some of like the movie theaterness inside. I vlogged there before. I'm gonna put on my mask. We got these on Amazon for $10 for three. One for all of us. And it's a mask guard. So you get less mask knee and it also helps you breathe better. It helps you uh, maintain the form of they your mask. Like, they look like one of those pimples. Like, doesn't it look so much better? Yeah. And I even put like a Vicks vapor rub in there to keep it minty fresh. So let's go to Barnes and Nobles. We went to Urban Outfitters and there was nothing. So now my fiance is like, I told you so. <laughs> Isn't it cute? It's a bookstore, Barnes and Nobles. It's so cute. I'm so excited. This, I mean, it kind of looks like it used to be a movie theater now with like the signs on the top. This is probably my favorite Barnes and Nobles ever. Even like better than the Grove, even though that one's like three stories. It just feels more like bookstory in here. Oh, oh mystery. Um, I've never felt like a kid in a candy store before. I can't believe I'm just now getting into Harry Potter this strong. We're getting the boxed illustrated. <laughs> so we're back from Barnes and Nobles and Urban Outfitters and we got two big bags of books. And I swear that these are no more like thriller books because I have a lot of mystery, thriller, psychological thrillers, horror, suspense, murder, mystery, crime type of books. I'm gonna just go through some of the books that I feel like you guys need to read and I'm probably never gonna do a baking a mystery on it for the reasons that I will state for each video and then we're also gonna go over the things that I bought from Barnes and Nobles. I guess maybe Barnes and Noble first. Okay, so I was never like a Harry Potter person. I what? was, but I wasn't. So I was when I was like in middle school and high school and I would read them and then uh -huh. I would watch all of the movies, right? Yeah. But I was never like that dedicated where I would dress up with them as them as every Halloween, buy all of their merchandise. I remember when I was young, they would come out with like box sets and those were like super cool and okay, everything. those are those. for like crazy fans. Yeah, I was never like a crazy fan. I think I only read them like twice. I don't think I read more than that. And then like the movies, they always have a soft spot in my heart, but I almost never rewatch them that many times. Mm. Like I would probably start one, but then I wouldn't like rewatch the whole series up until Corona hit. And Harry Potter hits different during Corona. Totally different in 2020. I'm gonna open this first. I wanted this for a couple months now, and I can't believe we finally got it. <laughs> The um, person was like, do you guys want to get for seed? And we were like, no. <laughs> and they were like, is it for you? And then I was like, yeah. So it's the JK Rowling Harry Potter 
illustrated collection. They only have the first four books illustrated and it's like a coffee table book. I got so it. So it has all the original text, right? Yes, it's not a shortened version. Whoa. So look this at that. one is the first book. It's the Sorcerer's Stone. And look at the inside. That's oh. Hagrid. Oh my god, this is so Wow. Hogwarts train. Whoa. Like it's look at this. Oh my god, all the ghosts. Can you show us a monster? Oh sh! It's a troll. Oh my god, oh, Gryffindorians. It smells 10 yeah, out smell. of 10. These are pricier than the regular hardcovers, but I like them because I feel like they can double as like a coffee table book, but also, um, yeah, Corona is a depressing time. I wanted to splurge wow. on Harry Potter, okay? <laughs> then the wow. second one is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets that's illustrated. Wow! I love like even just like the green grass. Oh, such music. We are, oh my god, that looks so oh cool. God. Wait, what is that? Oh my god. It's oh. Nocturnally. What is that? Oh, they're driving to yeah. school? Yeah. We got the Prisoner of Azkaban. Oh wow, that's so pretty. Whoa, wow. they are so cool looking. Oh my god, oh my god the werewolf. werewolf. Wow. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to read this. I feel like I could read this to my niece, Sophia. I could just pull up up in that bits and be like, let me give you a bedtime story. Boom, and then she'll just go the fuck to sleep. <laughs> yeah. So we had to get the box set for the first three and then the fourth one is here. So oh this God. came out October of 2019. So they're still working on the last couple books. So this is the Goblet of Fire. We just finished. I rewatched Goblet of Fire like twice this week. That's how big of a loser I am. We haven't been going out at all. I don't know oh what's my happening God. here. This is the game they were playing. Oh, when they the first World go, Cup. the World Cup. Oh, that's the Chinese fireball. Oh my god. Oh my god. god, the dragons are illustrated. This one, the green tail something. <gasps> the oh my Swedish god. short snout. Whoa. The ball. Is that the ball? Oh my god. Oh my god. gosh. We don't even know when the next illustrated ones are coming out. I Googled it and I was like, maybe they'll come out before we're done with those. But it didn't look like it was coming out anytime soon because the author recently released his sketches that were done on paper in a sneak peek. So we got the rest of them. These are just the original books. Yeah. No big deal. The Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, and Deathly Hallows. And then we also got the Cursed Child. Let's say you guys are not into Harry Potter. I have some other book recommendations, but I feel like you guys should definitely reread Harry Potter right now during COVID because it's like been our only escape. Like it's truly the only thing that's worked. We've tried everything. We've tried re-watching our favorite shows. we tried watching Chinese movies, Korean movies. We have done everything since literally like February. And we recently discovered Harry Potter works. Like it just like takes the stress out of life. It just sucks it out of you like a fucking Dementor. <laughs> That's good, that's good. That's a good one. If you guys are into a thriller book, this book is called Anxious People. This has been highly rated right now. It's by um, Frederick Backman. I'm just gonna give you like a quick synopsis. Think about a bank robbery. You're holding people hostage and they just kind of get to know each other's lives and they feel bad for the person who's robbing them and holding them hostage. That at the end, they actually help them get away. Sounds like a movie. It's good. It's one of those happy-go-lucky ones. Mm. Like it's a very like, heartwarming wholesome book mm. and I don't think that I like wholesome like that like I like wholesome if it's like Harry Potter wholesome but when it comes to like thrillers I want it to be nasty I feel like there's something about that and like trying to find out who it is trying to find out why they're so nasty mm. I feel like it's like why I love true crime so much but this was just like very very cutesy I wouldn't even consider it a thriller like it's like for if you're just getting into thriller and you're like I don't want something to keep me up at night or maybe you love thriller but you live alone this would be a really good book for you and then same with One for the Money. I recently got into this genre. This is by Janet Ivanovich. And I feel like she's probably the best author for this, which is mystery, but also trashy mystery. So like you're like sleeping around, like the main character, she's not really a detective. She's not FBI. She's not a police officer. She is not really like the family member of someone who went missing immediately. Like it's, it's kind of like Fifty Shades of Grey meets a detective series. It's almost like a very trashy rom-com but with murder. So this one is about a girl by the
the name of Stephanie <laughs> and she is a bounty hunter. This is like a wholesome thriller, this is a trashy thriller and I enjoyed them equally. Maybe the trashy one a little more. <laughs> and when I say trash, like this is literally, I could never write something like this. Like this is a masterpiece but I feel like trash means like it's not gonna be like your genuine mystery. So this next one is Cersei. <laughs> um, Kirk, but she calls it Cersei. So the author, Madeline Miller, she calls the book Cersei and the main character Cersei. This is the first book that got me into Greek mythology. I highly recommend it. Best book ever. I still, this is the one book that I almost want to reread. Other than Harry Potter, I don't really like rereading thrillers because you already know what happened. Unless it's such a well done, everything's so good that rereading it would make everything just like fall together. I almost never do it. And this isn't even a thriller, but I almost want to reread it. This is really, really good. And then she also came out with this book that I read, which is Song of Achilles. So good. This one I cried though. I just got wrecked by this one. Like for like a full day, I didn't feel normal. And so I had to stop reading this That's one. That's really high reviews. This one's so good. And then I had to go back into it because I was like, well, I need to know. And then that got me into these books, which I'm about to show you. So the first one is called Heroes. And then the second one is called Mythos by Stephen Fry. So those two Madeline Miller books got me really into Greek mythology. And I realized that I have no idea about anything about Greek mythology. I didn't even know what the fuck Aphrodite was or Athena and so I got this book because everyone was recommending it if you guys like Greek retellings it looks like a textbook but it's not so they include pictures for you to visualize but I don't really use those pictures because I like to use um my brain <laughs> so this one is pretty much just a summary of all of the gods and goddesses the titans how they're all related how they all came to be so those are really good if you guys want like a quick textbook like review of all of the goddesses it's not necessarily like a story there's really no plot it's like they'll introduce a god or a goddess and then they'll give you kind of like their life story but it's not written in such a boring way because i feel like i was always staying away from greek mythology because i'm like it's gonna be too much it's just gonna be words i don't really want to comprehend right now and then I also got this book called Good Omens I read about a chapter of it and I think I'm done because this is so highly rated on Goodreads people said this is the best book ever I think it has like close to a hundred thousand reviews and it's like four stars which is insane most most Goodreads books that have over a hundred thousand reviews have like three stars I just don't get it I just Why? don't really understand it. Not good? It's not even that it's not good. I literally don't understand it. Oh. <laughs> like, I literally don't know what they're saying. So that one, I mean, I might give it a retry. I also got this book because this is a book that you have to read before you die. The Odyssey. So Song of Achilles is based off of the Trojan War. And then we've got the full, full Trojan War. All of it. Yep, and this bit. I think people want us to hear some thrillers, not like oh. Greek mythology. Okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, Women on the Edge. See, I don't want to share with you guys like the best thrillers because I'm doing a bam on them. But this one is good. The plot is there. It's thick. So it's essentially this woman. You're on a train. She gives you her baby. Mm -hmm. And she knows your name. And then you're like, what am I going to do? And she's like, keep my baby safe, right? And you're like, holding this baby. And you're like, what am I going to do with your baby? Like, why are you giving me your baby? How do you know my name? I don't even know who you are. And then she jumps in front of the oncoming train and she dies she kills herself and so you have like this craziness of like why did this woman give me my her baby like who and then people start coming after her weird shit starts happening to her mm -hmm. and then she just feels like she needs to keep this baby safe and then the end yeah. is a pretty big yeah. letdown but like overall i would say like 60 percent of it way through is very very enjoyable and then the end you're kind of like okay like it's just so like if you don't mind being let down at the end Nobody want to get let down again, come on. <laughs> but if you want to enjoy 50% of a book really, really good. Nobody want to enjoy 50% <laughs> of a book. We've got this book called Lady Bits, a collection of short, scary stories. They weren't that scary, but if you're just getting into mystery and you're just getting into crime, it kind of is more like an ambiance book. I love the cover of this. I'm a big packaging hoe. The cover of this book is so pretty to me, so I really like this one. The short stories were enjoyable. They're, they're probably not going to be as good as like, if you were to just go on Reddit and read short stories <laughs> for free. But it's in the format of a very enjoyable book. Speaking of Reddit, I got this book. I haven't read it yet, but it's called The Patient. And it's actually, I, I got it just for the sole purpose of this author started on Reddit and he posted like um, a no sleep scary story. And then he continued the series and then made it into a book. Cool. It's a little bit of a shorter book. I heard it's really good. And then we've got this one, which is a very,
very depressing thriller. It's called Her Body and Other Parties, and it's almost like a horror story that also symbolizes I sound so intelligent, but it's really like I'm not that intelligent. It symbolizes um, the sad horror of violence that women's bodies go through. But they write it in a way that's not just like, and then women get assaulted, and then women get pregnant, and then women have periods. You know, it's like done so artistically. Like honestly, I think if you were a guy who didn't really know much about women's bodies who read this, you'd be like, that's a good horror story. But then if you are a girl, you're like, that is literally what that feels like. Deep. It's pretty deep. The rest I'm working on. Well, this one I read. But this one is called My Sister the Serial Killer. I read this for a BAM and I don't think I can do a BAM on this because it's just written pretty well. Like at first, I didn't like it. I'm gonna be honest, it has raving reviews on Goodreads. Everybody fucking talks about it. And I read it and I was a little bit let down. I didn't think that there was like this convoluted plot. There wasn't like this thick mystery. So it's essentially about a girl and her sister is a serial killer and she cleans up all of her sister's killings. Mainly her sister kills boyfriends that she's dating. And the first couple of killings, her sister convinces her like, listen, th this was in self-defense. Like he was trying to do this, A, B, C, and D. And so her sister comes over and cleans up all the blood, fakes the crime scene, and then they get away with it. But then, but then, and she has a boss that she loves and her sister suddenly starts dating that boss and she knows it's a matter of time before that d boss ends up dead. So it's like this whole, you know. That sounds good, what happened next? <laughs> <laughs> it's written in an interesting format, so there's not really chapters, but it's not a diary either. I'm trying to describe it. It's They just have like these one words and then a very short chapter and then another word to kind of describe that. I didn't hmm. like it at first, but then I read a couple other thriller books and then I came back to this one and then I was like, that's why people like it so much. It is different from all the other mystery books that you see on the market right now. And you go through it really quick. Like, I think I read this all in like a couple hours, like, definitely in one day. So, those are all my books. These are all the books that I want to read. So, I have a couple more Greek mythology books I want to read. So, we got a thousand ships. This is supposed to be retold of the Trojan War, but all from the voice of silenced woman. And then this one is the Penelopiad. Penelope. And in this one, I'm excited about it. It's called Oh My Gods. And it's a modern retelling of Greek and Roman myths. And apparently, it's supposed to be really funny. I used to be really into reading like self-help books because I thought those were like the only books that you should read because like they're, you're supposed to be productive with your life. And like I was like, you know what? I'm in my 20s. I need to read self-help because God, God knows, knows I need help. help. So I used to read those books. And then I realized it's not really self-help. You just like start making lists of all the things you got to change about yourself and then it's not self-help because you get sad so I decided to read things that I think are really fun and enjoyable and I will say that if you guys are in like the creative field or maybe you guys tell stories I feel like reading fiction books helps with storytelling because you understand how a story can be told and like the different elements and like how to tell a good story and then maybe one day maybe one day Maybe one day I'll finish all these books. <laughs> Everyone's like, write a book! And by everyone, I mean like two people. I feel like this is the lamest, most boring video I've ever done. It's okay. I'm so sorry. This was a boring ass video. Please don't hate me. Don't unsubscribe. I'll be back tomorrow with the non annoying ass, non Harry Potter ass video and I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you tomorrow. Make sure to check out simplehealth.com slash biz for a free consultation. Ugh.